hard to look at the physics behind them. And so in this video, I'm going to take a look at how that works. Okay, so we're going to see what happens specifically when we're going from picture one right here to picture two. And I'm going to completely disregard the outfit change and the motorcycle change. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. We're just looking at the wheelie. Okay, so what's happening before? Let's look at what happens before the wheelie happens. Actually, before the motorcycle even starts to accelerate. So we have no acceleration. Uh, there's no revving of the engine. Nothing's happening. This motorcycle is just literally sitting there static. So what does the free body diagram look like in that case? Well, let's see. We got weight. Uh, the weight points to down, and uh, that's the force of gravity, of course. And the motorcycle is not falling into the ground, right? So there must be some normal force keeping it, uh, uh, you know, pushing it off the ground, like keeping it steady. So we know that there's going to be a normal force one and a normal force two. So those are the two points of contact where the normal forces can act. I'm going to call them N1 and N2. Uh, and that's basically it. So those are all our forces in the system. So running out our equations of motion, uh, we find that the sum of the forces, let's see, that's going to be zero because there's no acceleration. And that's going to be N1 plus N2 minus W. And if we were to look at the rotation, uh, there is no rotational acceleration either. So uh, actually, let me define some dimensions here. So this point is our center of gravity, O. And uh, here we've got this distance and distance L. And this distance is also a distance L. And this distance is also L. These dimensions really don't matter for this example, but they just make it a little easier to understand. So some of the moments about O would be equal to zero, right? Because this motorcycle is not rotationally accelerating. Like I said, it's just static, sitting there, doing absolutely nothing. It's boring. So, but it's interesting to see why it's zero. What forces, or what moments rather, are, are being balanced? So the force of gravity does not produce a moment about O because it actually acts at O, through O. So the only forces that are producing moments would be N1 and N2, right? So N1 produces a clockwise moment because it's kind of pulling the motorcycle this way, right? And N2, on the other hand, produces a counterclockwise moment. It pushes the motorcycle counterclockwise. It's kind of, you can think of it as if it's like a seesaw um, and uh, the fulcrum is right here at point O and you know, you're pulling on either side. So what this tells us is that the moment produced by N1 equals the moment produced by N2. And that concept is going to be important as we move further in this video. So let's look at what happens. That, that's pretty clear. So let's look at what happens when we start accelerating. Um, so when we start accelerating, uh, actually, I'm going to look at what exactly happens down at the nitty gritty. So the engine creates a moment, and it produces a moment that acts on your rear wheel. So the rear wheel is angularly accelerated in the counterclockwise direction. And what does that do? Well, because there is a ground underneath the rear wheel, the rear wheel actually scrapes against the ground and pushes it backwards like that. Okay, so because the, the rear wheel pushes the ground backwards, Newton's third law says the ground must push the wheel forward. And so we've got the force of friction. And that is actually how the motorcycle moves. That's the net accelerating force in this case. It's pushing the motorcycle forward, in this case, to the left of the page. And yeah, so we've got a net force. Uh, the sum of the forces, in this case, I'm not going to worry about the y direction. We already said that's zero. But the sum of the forces in the x direction is no longer zero. It's going to be ma. And that's going to be equal to your force of friction. And so that's a really important force uh, for looking at how fast the motorcycle is going to accelerate uh, your you know, speed of getting from 0 to 60, you know, the time for getting from 0 to 60, stuff like that. Uh, but what's even more interesting in this situation, because since we're looking at the wheelie, is your sum of the moments. So the sum of the moments about O is going to be uh, from your N1 
So you have, it's going to be equal to N1 times L. So that's the moment from the, the normal force on the front wheel, uh, plus N2 L. So that's the moment from the normal force on the rear wheel. And now there's a third force. So let's see, friction is kind of pulling the motorcycle, it's pulling it forward, but the lever arm, you know, the seesaw is going to come from here. Uh, this vertical lever arm. So we're going to get a clockwise moment. It's kind of hard to see, but it is clockwise, just trust me. And so that's a <coughs> third moment right there. Um, but what do we know about normal force one and normal force two, N1 and N2? The moments they produce, we actually already talked about this that's going to be equal to zero because we looked in the previous situation when there was no acceleration, it was already zero. The moments they produce are equal. So we have now a third moment, which makes the net moment not zero. So we have a net uh, moment. And that means that there is angular uh, acceleration alpha. And that's going to be in the clockwise direction. There's a net angular acceleration that we have in the clockwise direction. And that makes sense. So that's exactly where the wheelie's coming from. The frictional force produces a moment in the clockwise direction and it basically makes the motorcycle turn clockwise and you have a wheelie. But not so fast. Let's think about what exactly happens when we get this angular acceleration and how it's affected by how big F is. So when you accelerate the motorcycle in the clockwise direction, uh, the front wheel will start to kind of lift a little bit off the ground. And so what does that mean? Well, the normal force, uh, that's too, uh, this is too dark, let's see. Uh, so the normal force in the front, N1, will start going down, right? Because the, the front wheel is starting to lift and the contact that it shares with the ground is going down. So the contact goes down, right? And as a result, to keep the motorcycle uh, steady, um, not accelerating vertically, normal force two would actually go up. So the weight's being transferred from the front wheel to the, the rear wheel. So there's actually what, what's known as weight transfer. And so all of this seems to support our idea for the wheelie. But when this happens, what we notice is that uh, we would actually end up equilibrating the system. So this normal force two can balance out the mo moment. Uh, the normal force two can, might balance out the moment from the frictional force too soon. So what you may end up having is that the, the there is some weight transfer, but there's no wheeling. And that's what usually happens in an accelerating motorcycle. Uh, the normal force N1 becomes low, N2 becomes high, but it's still just kind of, the, the front wheel is just hovering a little bit off the ground. It's not all the way up like this. So to get that to happen, we want N1 to go to zero. And for that to happen, the frictional force uh, must be really high because otherwise it'll get, it'll get balanced too early. So that's basically how you want to solve for this problem. If you were looking for... Um, you know, how much torque you need to, to get a wheelie, you would need to solve for the case when N1 equals zero, because that's really what defines the wheelie. You can have N1 be really, really small, but if it's not zero, the wheel hasn't lifted off the ground and you don't have a wheelie. But I hope that makes sense. Uh, in short, I think the main takeaway for the video would be that uh, it's the introduction of the frictional force that produces a moment that creates uh, the wheelie.